As a James Harden fan, I've seen everything. I've seen this man go toe to toe with one of the greatest teams ever assembled, only to fall short because of refs, injuries, and his team, the Houston Rockets, being so bad that they would set a playoff record for missed three pointers. I've seen this man average a ridiculous 36.1 points en route to drawing Wilt Chamberlain comparisons because of his masterful scoring ability, only to be criticized for that same ability when the reality is that he's always been an equally as talented passer also. Now while I've seen the good side of James Harden on the basketball floor, I've also unfortunately seen the bad side. I've seen Harden quit on plays and teams altogether, and while my man has had some very valid reasons, they don't necessarily make the way that he checks out any prettier. I can't lie, when James Harden got traded to the Los Angeles Clippers, I undoubtedly was not the biggest fan of them feeling like they needed to make this move. But at the same time, I did understand how adding a player and a superstar who's as dynamic as Harden could positively affect their bottom line. Despite everybody including myself having some reservations about the trade and the Clippers ripping off six straight losses after the move went down, with the help of James Harden, the Los Angeles Clippers have become one of the best teams and stories in the NBA. And what's terrifying is that this squad doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. And we have to talk about that. But first, what you see on your screen right now is a free square courtesy of Prize Picks, who was absolutely hooking it up this holiday season. With this free square, all you have to do is select it and then watch Kevin Durant, who has been having a bonkers season in Phoenix, score more than one point. When Kevin Durant, who has been averaging 31 points on the season, scores more than that one point, you win. The only catch is that this square is only here for a limited time meaning that you need to pair this square with another player as soon as possible if you want to take advantage of this offer. Now, when you guys sign up for prize picks, make sure to use code COOP so that you can get your first deposit matched for up to $100. Guys, be sure to show prize picks some love for coming through and sponsoring today's content. As you guys know, I am a massive Houston Rockets and James Harden fan who has defended this man for years. So when I speak on Harden, it comes from a very passionate and knowledgeable place. Honestly, I just want what's best for this man and his career at this point in time. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that I'm immune to his nonsense and going to gas up every single thing he does like I'm some sort of yes man in Kanye West's center circle. In my opinion, fans or even friends that blindly support every move that somebody makes, they don't always have that person's best interest in mind. What I'm trying to say is that even though I love James Harden, like many other fans, I have no problem criticizing him when it's needed. With that being said, I do believe that there's a fine line between valid criticism and flat out hating like this Mavericks announcer did right here. Listen James, have you ever had those friends who had bad roommates? Over and over they complained about their bad roommates. This guy's terrible, the bad roommate here. They never thought to be self-aware enough that they're the bad roommate. They're the problem. Hey, James, you're the problem. You're not the beard. You're not the system. You're the problem. To be fair to the announcer, James Harden has had his fair share of blunders and questionable moments. But even with that being said, I was surprised at how hard this man went on James Harden. You can see the dedication in this man's eyes and tell that he definitely meant everything that he said. I'm also surprised that he was able to convince an entire network, or at least his colleagues, to go ahead and give him the green light for a full segment dedicated to his anti-Harden monologue. Now I have to give props to Harden here, because this man could have completely ended his career with the right response, but instead of doing that, Harden being the ultra chill guy that he is, would just kind of be like WTF. Here's what Harden had to say about that Mavs announcer's monologue. I didn't even hear exactly what he said but people were telling me he was going in on me. He doesn't know me or the situation. That would be messed up if I went at him and started being disrespectful to him, but I can't. They don't know anything. They just go off what they see on social media or hearsay. I don't know exactly what he said, but I pay that stuff no mind. I do a really good job of ignoring the noise because it doesn't affect me. It's just people talking. I guarantee that if you put whoever is talking in this situation, it wouldn't be beneficial for them. That's my mindset but my focus is getting wins. Ironically, the Clippers just beat the Mavericks 120-111 to en route to winning their ninth straight game, which not only has James Harden and this Clippers team been winning, they've been looking fantastic while doing so. Ever since the Clippers ended their six-game losing streak, they've been top five in both defensive and offensive net rating. 
And also, since that six game losing streak, Harden has been averaging 17.8 points, 8.8 assists, and 4.7 rebounds. And as weird as this might sound to some people, Harden's impact on the floor has gone well beyond his numbers. Now that's not to say that Harden hasn't already shown his flashes of the Harden that stole our hearts in Houston, because against the Pacers, this man showed us the entire package as he was unstoppable. Harden was cooking so hard that this man started making snow angels on the hardwood after he hit his fourth straight three-pointer in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter of this game, Harden would actually go on to score 18 straight points, which comically enough, Kawhi would say that he was just happy to be on the right side of Harden doing this, being on the wrong side of it so many times. He also said that it was like he paid for seats that night to an entertaining show. One of your franchise players being able to say this about another star on your roster is an absolute luxury and is something that shouldn't be taken for granted, especially when the star that said this has struggled with their health, needing that dreaded load management in the past. This is a good time to bring up that Kawhi himself said that adding Harden to this roster gives him more energy to focus on defense, which is terrifying. I don't think that a lot of people understand how terrifying that this team could truly be. Most teams don't have three to four great perimeter defenders to throw at this team which means that every night, one of their stars should be faced with a favorable matchup, which allows them to have a big night just like Harden did against Indy. Harden would finish that game against the Pacers with 35 points, three rebounds, and nine assists, while going 12 of 16 from the field and eight of 11 from the three-point line. And get this, Paul George would have 27 points himself, meanwhile Kawhi would finish with 28. Now this video, we've been talking a lot about Harden, but perhaps the real story here has been the tear that Kawhi has been on, doing things that have rarely been seen before. According to Clutch Points, only two players in NBA history have had a six game span where they've averaged at least 30 points while shooting 65% from the field and 55% from the three point line. Larry Bird did it in 1986 and Kawhi did it this season. This season as a whole has been a breath of fresh air for Kawhi who would play in his first 27 games before missing any time. It's no secret that Kawhi has had injury problems and has grown tired of hearing about load management, when the truth is that he's needed it throughout the years. When you add the issues that he's had to battle through with the fact that people are out here saying things like he needs to be forced to retire, I really don't blame him for growing tired of that whole load management narrative. Sure, Kawhi has had to battle injury throughout his career, but when he's scoring at all three levels and dominating all over the floor while providing high level defense, you can see why it seemed like the Clippers continue to believe in his ceiling as opposed to soaking in his floor. Besides, it's not like the Clippers really have much of a choice. This team invested a ton to be here. Which brings me to the question, do you blame the Clippers for investing what they did in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George? Personally, I feel like anybody would have pulled the trigger there, but that's just my opinion. So what I love the most about this Clippers team turning things around this early in the season is that you can tell that this team is having a good time throughout this whole process. Even Kawhi Leonard has been looking like he's having the time of his life as he celebrates essentially everything that Harden does. Out in Los Angeles, the vibes have really been immaculate, which is what you love to hear considering how shaky that things once were. It feels like just yesterday that players were mad that Paul George and Kawhi were getting special treatment and that Doc Rivers was beefing with Paul George all because he had no idea how to properly use the guy who was a legit MVP threat in 2019. Again, I can't overstate how happy I am for this team. The ball is moving, and then you have Ty Lue who is running sets that make sense, Russell Westbrook and James Harden have been playing phenomenal defense, and most importantly of all, this team has at least been relatively healthy. As things stand, the Clippers are their own greatest enemy, which is actually kind of funny because I do feel like that's been true for quite a while. Now while the results so far have been good, even Kawhi knows that it's a long season and that the job is most definitely far from being done. This team has to remain hungry and most importantly, again, this team has to remain healthy. So yeah, it's too early for victory laps, but it's not a bad time for a couple of high fives. I feel like this fan base at least owes themselves that. What's funny is that I can already see people in the comments furiously typing, Coop, we've seen this story before. In the comments below, let me know how you guys personally feel about the Clippers and that notorious James Harden trade. Are you surprised that the Harden system has been this effective early on? 
Do you believe that this Clippers team truly does have a chance to win it all? If you were the Clippers, what would you make your next move? Again, guys, let me know what you think of everything down in the comments below. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop, bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.